There are two ways that you can have one layer control the actions of another layer. One's called expressions, the other one is parenting. We're going to work on expressions in a different chapter. We're going to work on parenting in this lesson. So to follow along, go to Working Files, After Effects Projects, and open up 1401 Parenting. We have a couple of comps here, this tire and text comp, and our good old buddy, the puppet. And this time he's got all different kinds of layers where we can control each one of his limbs and articulate them separately. So we're going to go back to tire and text and start here. The goal is to have the tire control the rotation, scale, and position of the text. It would be kind of cumbersome to change the rotation, scale, and position of the tire and then try to get the text to match it later. It's much easier if you can control them directly. And you do that using something called parenting. Parenting is like a typical parent-child relationship where the parent sets some boundaries for the child, and then the child can have a certain bit of independence within those boundaries. And so After Effects works very much like life. You can have a child-parent relationship where the parent says, this is what you can do, and then the child can act a little bit independently but still has to follow the parent around. So you do that inside the timeline using one of the column headers. You go over here and right-click and click on Columns and then choose Parent. And that opens up this little controller here, a drop-down list, and what's called a pick whip, P-I-C-K whip, like a lariat. We'll talk about the pick whip when we work on the puppet, so we'll stick with the drop-down list for now. If you want to parent something, you select the layer and you tell that layer what its parent is. And so right now I want the text to be the child and the tire to be the parent. So I go over here to this drop-down list and I say, okay, text, your parent is tire. All right. So anything we do in terms of the transform properties, except for opacity and tire, will now directly affect the text. So you can change the scale, the position, the rotation, or the anchor point, and the text will follow along because the text is the child, right? So let's just do that right now. I want to drop the scale on this guy, so I'm going to go down to Tire and press S for Scale. I'm going to change the scale, and look at how the text follows along. We'll take it way down like that. Now I want to change the position, so I'll click on the Tire and move it down here, and the text just follows right on along. This makes it so much easier than trying to keyframe both of them and having them match. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keyframe the scale and the position and the rotation. So I need to have this guy active, and I go Shift-R to add rotation and shift P to add position. We've got all three of those guys there. Let's take the current time indicator to the beginning here, and we'll turn on keyframes for all three. Let's make those guys easy ease. Just right click on them and keyframe assistant and go easy ease. There you go. Now let's go about halfway in here or so, and I'm gonna change the position, just drag it someplace like that, let's say, and change the scale, and they're gonna work in concert like that. Maybe I need to pull the position in a little bit left so they can fit. There we go. I'm going to rotate it, let's say, six times. And I want to rotate it counterclockwise because I want the text to go in the right order. So I go over here, go negative six, minus six, there like that. So now halfway through, it's going to have rotated six times. Let's watch that. Notice how the text and the tire are working exactly together. That's the parent-child relationship. Let's go past this point here to the end, and we'll just change the position up to here, let's say. And we'll scale it down now like so. And what I want to do is I want the rotation to go back to the beginning to sort of counter-rotate. So I'll go to zero now. There you go. So we'll see how this thing plays out now. It's going to go up to the center. Let me turn off that little trail there. Now you can see it better. Goes to the center. Sort of slows down now together. And then it goes the other direction and heads off to the upper left-hand corner. And that's how parenting works. But we all know that children sometimes don't exactly follow their parents' orders, right? So you can have the text act sort of independently. It can get larger, it can get smaller, but it'll still follow the basic commands of the tire. So I'm going to open up text here and click on R for its rotation. And I want it to rotate sort of independently. I want it to go faster. So I'm going to keyframe rotation for the beginning here and go to the end by pressing the end key or just dragging it there. I'm going to have it rotate minus six times, minus six. So what's going to happen? It's going to go minus six to the end there, while it's also going minus six to here. So let's just see what happens. It's going to go faster than the wheel, faster than the tire. Then when it gets halfway through here, what's going to happen? And now the wheel goes the other way, and now the text kind of now has to slow down while it tries to behave independently, kind of in reverse of what the parent is doing. So the parent's going one way and the kid keeps on wanting to go the other way. 
And so they kind of work counter when they're going backwards like that. There you go. That is how the parent-child relationship works. Let's go to the puppet where you have a lot more parent-child relationships. This is a puppet that has all these articulating limbs. Let me just take his right foot, open it up, press the R key for rotation. You can see you can rotate the right foot. Notice that the foot rotates on the center because the anchor point's in the center of the foot. We want to change that in a second. Let's look at the left calf, for example. Click R for that. You'll see that the calf rotates to the center. Also, pretty uncomfortable if that's your leg, right? So we'll undo that. What we need to do first of all, before we do any kind of connecting of parent-child relationships here, is to adjust the anchor points that we're going to work with here, because we want the anchor points to be at the joints where they're going to connect. So I want to move the anchor point, for instance, for the calf to its knee, and for the thigh to its hip, and for the foot to the ankle, like that. So to do that, I use the pan behind tool, which is right there. Y is the keyboard shortcut. But the easiest way to do this is to hold down Y and not let go, and that temporarily turns on the pan behind tool. So to click on the foot there to make it active, hold down the Y key and keep it held down, move the anchor point to right there, let go of the Y key, click on this guy, click the Y key again, move the anchor point to the knee now, let go of the Y key, click on the thigh, hold down the Y key again, move it in place like that, Good. Now that we got the thigh and the calf and the foot anchor points all taken care of, let's deal with the anchor points in the right arm. So I'm going to click on the hand and the anchor points in the center. So I press the Y key now and move the anchor point to the wrist, like so. Click on the forearm, Y key, drag it to the elbow. Click on the upper arm, Y key, drag it to the shoulder. So that's how we'll set these guys up. So now if I take, let's say, the left thigh right here, press R for rotation, and move the thigh, it's now connected at least to the hip. But I want to connect the rest of these guys, so I'll do Control or Command Z to get that lined up. I need to connect the left foot with the left calf, and the left calf with the left thigh. And so let me just pull this up a little bit so you can see these guys a little bit better. I'm going to close them all down. I want to connect these guys. I need to see the parent column, so I right click here and say Columns, Parent. Now what do we need to do? We need to get the left foot connected to the left calf. I could take this little drop down list and say, okay, where's your parent? You go, left foot is connected to the left calf. There's the parent. Notice that left foot is grayed out because you can't parent to yourself. There you go. Now I need to take the left calf and connect it to the left thigh. There you go, left calf, left thigh. So now if I click on left thigh and go R for rotation and move it, it's going to move them all as a unit. But in the meantime, I can move it out like that. I can open up the left calf, put rotation for that. I can rotate it independently. I can take the left foot, press rotation for that, and rotate it independently, just like we had the tire rotate independently. So you can animate the whole thing, but you can also animate parts of them as well. Okay, let's use the pick whip tool to connect the right arm. It's going down here a little ways to the arm. There's the right upper arm, right forearm, right hand. We want the right hand to connect to the right forearm. Very simple. Just take this pick whip and drag it to the right forearm. See how that works? It looks like a little line, and we let go. It kind of whips back. Kind of cool. I like that. Take the pick whip for the right forearm and connect it to the right upper arm. All right, so I click the right upper arm, press R for rotation. Let's see what the right arm does. There you go. In the meantime, we can have the hand behave independently. So I click on the right hand, press R for rotation. And hello, we can wave the hand like that. So what I want to do now is I want to connect up all of the main limbs and the head to the torso, so that if we move the torso, everybody moves together. So I'm going to close these guys all down again so we have a little more real estate here. There we go. Pull this thing up a little ways so you can see everything. There's everybody. There we go. Now I want to be able to connect all the major limbs plus the head to the torso. So I'm going to click on all the major limbs, left eye, Control or Command click on right thigh. Control or Command click on left upper arm. Right upper arm and head. Now I want to connect all of them to the torso. As long as they're all selected like that, I can take one single pick whip, click it and drag it to the torso, and all of them now will say torso. Okay, now I need to connect the rest of the guys just briefly to make sure that we don't have them all falling apart. So I'm going to go left hand, goes to left forearm, left forearm, goes to left upper arm. I want to take the right foot, to the right calf, and the right calf, to the right thigh, and now I think we're all done. I'm going to pull this down so you can see it a little bit better. If I just click on the torso and move it, 
everybody moves, which is really cool. All you need to do is take the torso and move it, and everybody will follow along, and you can have them animating independently. Now, if I go down to the torso here and click on, let's say, scale, if I scale the torso, everybody gets bigger. So you make it look like he's going off in the distance and then coming closer while he's walking around, something like that. So there you go. There's the parent-child relationship. Who knew you'd get a life lesson here inside an After Effects course?